Welcome back. Uh, we will be continuing our series on data analysis using Python. In this lecture, we will look at one of the most important data structures in, in Pandas, uh, which is data frames. Uh, so today we will talk about, you know, a basic intro. We'll, we'll look at a basic intro to data frames, and we'll look at working data frames. And at the very end, optional, but I highly recommend it, how to import some data, let's say financial data from sources such as Yahoo Finance, if you want to do some analysis. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, as I mentioned before, data frame is one of the very useful data structures in Pandas because it closely mirrors the kind of data that we typically see in the real world out there. If you think about a spreadsheet full of data, you know, with columns describing specific things, think about a grade sheet, you know, with names and midterm exam one, midterm exam two, and so on, you know, as columns, and you have students and the row, student values, you know, student uh, grades as rows, including student names. Right? This is the kind of data that we see in everyday life, and so data frame kind of resembles something like that. Okay, and as we as I mentioned before, the first row will often contain the column headings, and in pandas, you know, for data frames, you can definitely optionally specify an index for each row. Right? Um, I'm going to show you an example below, but if you don't specify it, pandas, no problem because pandas can anyway internally index each row starting from zero. Okay, again, this is kind of similar to what we did in the previous video for series. We noticed that towards the very end, in the optional content, if you don't specify an index, pandas will automatically create that index for you. It's going to start from zero. Okay, so let's get started. As usual, we need the import uh, statements. We have import numpy as np, import pandas as pd, and from pandas specifically, import series, comma, data frame. Okay, something that we did in the last lecture. In the last Jupyter Notebooks, very similar, we need to have it. Let me make sure I run this. So I just ran that, okay? Now let's see how we can create uh, a data frame. So what I wanna do is just to create the data frame, let me just go through some setup process. I wanted to come up with a simple example that you can look at within a screen rather than you know uh, overwhelming you with a big data frame with thousands of data, data points, okay? So let's say that I have a grade book here. Uh, let's say I have the grades here for three exams. Tim underscore GR, Nanda underscore GR, Juan underscore GR represent these three scores for each student, Tim, Nanda, and Juan. Right now it's in a list form, right? List data structure. Uh, this is Python data structure. This is what I have, basic ingredients. Now how do I go about creating a data frame, okay? Very simple. So let's here's a variable df that I'm going to assign to at the end of the day, right? Equal to the function name is data frame. Before, if you recall, for series, the function name was series. Very easy. Data frame, open parenthesis, close parenthesis at the very end. And in the middle, now what we need is a list of lists, right? So here's what I need, a list. Here's the first row, 65, 80, 80. So that's going to be here. And then Nanda's grades, a row with three grades. Juan's grades, a row with three grades. Three lists, again closed with another list. List of lists. Okay, not unlike the matrix structures we looked at before, you know, both for Python, the original Python structure, when we looked at uh, lists and nested lists, as well as the two-dimensional ND array when we checked last, uh, when we looked at NumPy ND arrays. Okay, so this is the raw, raw data that we want to look at. Okay, comma, and then again, similar to the series object, you know, for pandas, I, I, I choose to specify the index here. So my index is going to be Tim, Nanda, and Juan, right? String object, in this case, enclosed in quotes. And if you notice, conveniently, Tim corresponds to Tim's grades, Nanda corresponds to Nanda's grades, Juan corresponds to Juan's grades. Okay, the only the other difference from from uh, series is that now I'm, I can also specify the columns because there's going to be more than one column when it comes to data frame. Okay, now I can actually name them columns. Right, it's a list. I could have easily had a you know list created here called it subject and had a list, but here I I didn't do that. I'm just directly assigning a list columns equal to. CIS, accounting, marketing, again, all, each of these in quotes. Close the square bracket, close the parenthesis that starts from here, right? And that's the data frame. I assign that to a variable called DF, 
let's print af oh there's an error message again if you think about it the error message says tim underscore gr is not defined because again i forgot to run this cell so let me run this cell and now let me run the third cell okay now here you see an example of a very simple very basic data frame right so here are your three lists that we assigned these are the data values literally right uh, not nanda these three here three 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 data values looks like a matrix like what you would see in a spreadsheet right uh, it can be if there are multiple if there are let's say 50 students you're going to see 50 rows with 50 values for each of these columns okay here are the columns grades for cas grades for accounting course grades for marketing course as an example okay and i happen to specify this as index i didn't have to but i did right tim nanda and juan so these are the, these are my index index values okay and so now we've created successfully i might add a data frame called data frame variable called df okay now i just want to quickly show you another way of doing the same thing okay using numpy two-dimensional arrays right that's again very simple instead of having a list of lists here okay what i might do is take those three lists tim nanda Huang, right these three great books take them in here right and create an np array numpy array okay that would create a two-dimensional array right i'm going to assign that to a variable called great book gr underscore book and then that could go in as a first argument instead of this list of lists right i could just specify this two-dimensional numpy array as the data value which makes sense and then i have everything else the same index right columns okay so index equal to columns equal to syntax you gotta have that okay i mean unless you don't want to specify index if it's optional but if you want to specify an index you got to follow this okay and i'm going to pass this to the data frame function assign the data structure that comes out to a new variable called df1 and it should be pretty similar to what we had before so let's print df1 and confirm that okay again and again an error because gr underscore book was not defined hopefully you know why i gotta go back to the previous cell make sure that i ran the code now gr underscore book has been created in the memory right and now i run this again i should get the same thing okay so we here we have a new variable df1 so we have two variables now df and df1 right they have the they have the same data but i created them differently again just like series there are many ways of creating a data frame object okay um, sometimes again i'm going to show it to you towards the very end you can download this directly you know remotely over the web from yahoo finance google finance you know, data from there or you could even and this is what we are going to do in the next module you probably have a file somewhere you know it's a csv file or something like that a data file you could just read the file into the data frame object that's probably the most common way of doing it because most of us will have some local file right that's already there and i want to read that into a data frame object okay so now that we have this right data frame object df let's see how we can work with this data frame okay so first what i want to do is examine column names so again remember df and df1 are quite similar so the data is going to be the same so i'm going to type in df.columns think about what's going to come out it's basically going to tell you here are the column labels or column names cas acc mkt okay so now let's say that you didn't really you didn't really create a data frame all you knew was there were there is a data frame called df here's a way you can get yourself acquainted with the, with the data so now you know there is cis acc mkt those are the column names right now if you if you want to examine the values in a specific column right i could just type in df and in quotes cis and let's run this so you have the values associated with cis if you look up cis here 65 80 and 90 and that's what you see here also comes with the index that you assigned okay so so now um let's move on to accessing individual uh, rows or not maybe not rows but just trying to see what's out there okay so one way for me is i can directly print 
like if, it, if I say print df, it's going to print all of it. In this case, there was no problem because when I had only three rows, sometimes you have thousands of rows. It may not be feasible for you to examine everything at the same time. Maybe it's a bit overwhelming. So what you can do is show me the first few rows in the data frame. Okay, that's what the head function does. So let me type that in. So it's going to show you the first few rows, probably more than three, I'm sure. But in this case, since the data frame itself had only three rows, it's going to pull everything that you have here. Okay. And similarly, right, if I wanted to see the last few rows of a data frame, I'm going to comment this out. I can say, show me the last few rows using the tail function. The result is going to be similar simply because we have only, only have three rows. So it's going to be the same. But for a data frame that has thousands of rows, then obviously you will see different data points. The first few data points for a head, last few data points for tail, okay? And not just that. If you want, I can even specify how many rows you want to see for either the head or the tail. I could say df.head and in bracket say, I want to see two rows, the first two rows, okay? If I run this, now I'm going to only see the first two rows, Tim and Nanda, okay? And just as we did before, I can also access rows by index, right? Instead of saying head, tail, you know, or some things like that, I could say, I could use this function. Again, syntactically, I need to say ix, dot ix for index, and put in the value 10, right? Because I, I defined this as the index for that row. And if I ran this code, I'm actually going to say for Tim, CIS is 65, accounting is 80, which is what I see here, marketing is 80. Okay, so this is what you see. And I can also access the same, right, using a different syntax. And this is surprising, right? So instead of Tim, maybe there's an internal structure that Pandas created, right? Zero, one, two. Tim is zero, Nanda is one, Juan is two. Remember computational thinking starting from zero. So if so, even though I assigned Tim as, as index, let's see if something might happen if I say print. Let me just say first, well, before I do that, let me just say this, ix0, what's going to happen? It's going to print, right, the first row, 65, 80, and 80, okay? And if I say start from the beginning, I can do slicing. Like go up to two, but do not include two. So that's zero and one, the first two rows. Okay, but I need to use the index function, ix. Okay, and please note that for rows, I'm actually doing the slicing operation, right? And for columns, I'm actually using this df in quotes cas. Okay, sorry, let me go back here. I don't want to be too fast. So I'm doing this to get that. Okay. So now, let me run this. So I see that the first two rows are printed. Okay, I'm accessing values for specific rows as I specified, you know, using a slicing operation here for the index. Okay, even though I defined, you know, I use these as the index, in, in the index values, Pandas also has an internal scheme. Okay, now let's go a step further. Now, not only do I want the first two rows, that's what I say here, right? starting from zero, going all the way up to two, but not including two, comma, but please give me the first, not, not first two, but give me the column CIS and marketing. That's what this says, okay? So let's try running this. So now you've got the first two rows, Tim and Nanda, and only column CIS and marketing, okay? So here are some of the ways I can work with the data frame, okay? I can use, to, to refer to columns, I basically use the column names in quotes, exactly as they appear. If there's a space, you need to make sure that you have the space in there, but exactly as they appear should give you the columns. And for index, I need to use the function dot ix, okay? So what are the other things, some of the other things, useful things that I can do with the data frame? Again, we are in the basic, you know, elementary stage, so I'm only gonna give you one or two more, and then we're gonna move on, okay? So we can do a sum df.sum. So let's see what that what that does. So it's basically summing across rows, not these two rows, but let me go all the way back up here. 65, 80, and 90 for CIS, 80 plus 80 plus 95 for accounting, and 80 plus 90 plus 95, okay, for marketing, okay? And that's what you should see here, all right? So it sums 
along the rows, sorry, along the columns, okay? And gives you the sum. What about describe? There's another function called describe. So df.describe should give you the basic stats. How many, how many items? What's the mean of each column, right? What's the mean for CAS, mean for accounting and so on? Standard deviation, minimum value in that column, maximum value in that column, and the 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 25th percentile. Okay, again, these numbers would make more sense. There are a lot more rows. Okay, so it's basic descriptive statistics. Data frame dot describe. All right.